All right, so my name is Ashley, and I am the District Awards Chair, and I am from Cal State Fullerton. Hi, I'm Junie. I'm the Golden Gate and Magic Kingdom Divisional Representative from Cal State Fullerton. Hi, I'm Vivian from UCSD, and I'm the Central Coast Foothill Paradise and Sunset Divisional Rep and the Executive Assistant. Oh. All right, well, I am not Kevin, but I will be presenting, I guess I'll be, pretend I'm Kevin. Um, Kevin Chung is from University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and he is the um, Desert Oasis representative. All right. Uh, my name is Nam Huang. I'm uh, from the University of Nevada, Reno, and I am the capital representative. Um, my name is Servali, and um, I'm from UCLA, and I'm the Metro Awards representative. Okay, so I'm going to go over the five W's of the awards, and this is Junie, by the way. So what are the awards? So they're basically some documents and Excels that you can find in the JCloud Resource Center that's located in the CNH District website. Um, wait, what happens is the Kiwanians will judge every award that you submit with great detail, and if you do win an award, you get certificates and patches, and with that, it results in a lot of school pride and a lot of recognition for your club. So who can apply? Um, anyone can really apply, although it is recommended that the board members are the ones who apply because they, can, they basically have like all of the required materials, but almost anyone can apply. Okay, so when? The cutoff dates for all events is February 17th. So any event that happens after seven, February 17th, you can't um, put that into the awards. And with that, um, the awards will be due February 20th. It's a lot earlier this year, but it's also because Decon is a lot earlier, so we have to make do with what we got. Okay, so why do you fill it out? Well, when you fill out the awards and you win an award, you basically set standards for your club to abide by and for other clubs to abide by. So each year, the standard just keeps getting higher and higher. And with that, we just keep doing better and more service and more fundraising and whatnot. So now where? Kevin will explain where you can do that. Kevin. Thank you, Junie. <clears throat> when your club is filling out awards, remember that all the awards need to be sent in via mail uh, to the Kalanipal Kiwanis District Office at this address on the PowerPoint. Um, the only exception for mailing is the Maple Wong Award because it is required that it must be submitted online and they must be sent to Ashley Valdez, your district awards chair, and your district governor, Jonathan Kaunuen, on the emails listed below on the PowerPoint. Uh, finally, there are three awards that can be submitted on-site at district convention or DECON, such as the oratorical contest, the non-traditional, and traditional scrapbooks. Now I will send it to Vivian to talk about Distinguished versus outstanding. So there's two types of awards, distinguished and outstanding. So distinguished is like everyone who applies, they're eligible to win if, I mean, well, get the award if they meet the requirements by getting the um, right amount of points. For outstanding, 
all the schools that apply are competing for the first, second, and third place. And then, so the next slide will have the DECON awards. So the next few slides are, are all the awards presented at DECON. But I'm only, um, they're pretty um, straightforward, but I'll only go over a few like important parts for each. So for the GEM awards, you don't, these are automatic awards, so you don't need to apply for it, but it's based on the membership like improvement from the previous year. Um, there's the red, the ruby, sapphire, emerald, and diamond division. For the md and &E and KFAM award, they're part of the total achievement, so make, make sure you complete those if you want to do the total achievement. For the website award, um, you should have applied for that back in October, but you still want to make constant updates because the Kawaiians will still be judging them. For the monthly reports on time award, these are the um, this is also an automatic award. It's given to the secretaries that tune in 100% of the MRFs on time. And yeah, for the next slide. Okay, so well, the we made a change this year for the appointed officer award. Last year, anyone on the appointed board could apply, but this year, only the A board with without a specific award for their position can apply. So, for an example, the scrapbook chair can't apply because they already have a scrapbook award, and the service chair can't apply because they have a single service award. Um, an example that could apply would be like spirit chair or social chair. Um, for the president, I mean the e distinguished e board awards. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward as well. Just be sure to read it, everything carefully because they have some attachments that you may need. And for the club improvement award, um, we made a change. So you can't apply to the you can't apply for the club improvement award if you guys won if your school won the total achievement award last year. So unless you're moving up a different division, as in like you get more members from the from like 59 members to 60 members, then that's that's a different um, different member ranking. And also for the Maple Wong Award, we only want it to be turned in online, and so you don't need to print that out at all. And for the D Distinguished Club Award, that's part of the Total Achievement Award, but it's given yeah, it's just like distinguished rather than first, second, third place. The club's um, club's choice scrapbook award it will be done on site. So um, at Decon, like during the dance or something, we'll have all the scrapbooks on display, and each club can send a representative to vote for their favorite traditional or non-traditional. And then for the divisional one, um, most board club boards don't need to worry about it because the LTG will be doing that. And for the the other awards, like the Faculty Advisor Kiwanian and Hall of Fame Award, it's basically if you want to recognize someone within um, those categories, like anyone, like it can be anyone that applies for it. And yes, the total achievement is the big award. It's really hard. And now, oh, okay. And now Jeannie will talk about the Excel. Awards. I like the photo of this thing. Okay, so um, this year we put some awards into an Excel format. So the awards that we converted into Excel is the Distinguished Club Improvement, Distinguished Kiwanis Family Relations, the Maypo Wong, and the Outstanding Interclubbing Award. Um, a couple things to note. Don't use Microsoft Office 2008, um, they just won't work on it, so sorry about that. And Windows 2008, we don't recommend using, or Windows 8, we don't recommend using Windows 8 because we just haven't tested it on it. 
And I don't think many of you guys have Windows 8 to begin with, but in case you guys do, just use a different, just use someone else's computer or your school's computer. Um, we also made a tool, we call it the event filter. So what this filter will do it, is it will help alleviate the task of filling out awards. It'll help eliminate most of the tedious work. You're going to have to do some work, but we try to help eliminate most of like the tedious work for you guys. Um, so basically, all you do is copy the events from your MRF into the filter, and then you can filter out whatever events you want. So for example, if you just want events that have the Kiwanis family tag, then you can filter out all the events that have the Kiwanis family tags, and you'll just be left with the list of Kiwanis family events. And then you can just copy the events onto the award, and then you're done. Um, so also, if you want to see a little demo of the event filter in action, I guess, um, just stick around to the end, and I will show you. Kevin will talk about the award cutoff dates, I think. Okay, thank you, Jeannie. Um, due to DECON being early this year, um, the awards cutoff date will be on February 17th. Um, that will be due for this year. However, it doesn't mean that your club has to stop doing community service because your hours will still count towards your, member, your members' MRP statuses or membership recognition program. Remember that your awards application needs to be received by February 20th. This means that the CNH Kiwanis office needs to have your awards in their office on that date, not postmark, or you cannot deliver it personally to the Kiwanis office either because they won't accept it. Also, remember that the Maple Wong Award must be su submitted on February 20th at 10 p.m. by email to the district awards chair and our district governor. Also, for those who filled out the awards application for the Outstanding Club website, please be aware that the recommended last day for website revision should be done on February 20th as well. Finally, keep in mind that your club will have more time to develop their traditional, uh, non-traditional scrapbook and whoever is interested in doing the oratorical contest at DECON since they are all due on site on March 15th. Now I want to pass it on to Vivian to share with all of you on some handy tips about the awards. Okay, so. Hmm. So I don't know how, if, if any of you guys started yet, but um, if you haven't started yet, a good way to start is split up the Total Achievement Award because that's the biggest one. So um, what we did last year was um, we, we gave each board member a different topic, a different topic like for the, the essay portion, and they, did, they wrote it over winter break, and then we rotated and edited it. And we also put it on Google Docs, so then it's easy to edit and keep it updated. And okay, another thing is the endorsement page. Be sure, don't forget about the endorsement pages and the eBoard award, the cover pages. So the endorsement page is mandatory. So if you're doing any awards at all, you have to print this out. And um, it's basically like the cover letter. You need to you check off which awards you're applying for, and you need to get it signed by like the Kiwanis advisor, the president, etc. So be sure to get all the signatures early because you don't want to wait to the last minute running around finding people. Um, another thing is for recommendation letters. Uh, distinguished eBoard and eBoard require recommendation letters, and the president needs two recommendation letters. So you should ask, you should find someone to write it like as soon as possible for you. But um, yeah, for that, be sure um, be sure to like keep updated because if you ask them once and then they forget about it, then and you ask them at the end, then it's it's kind of too late. Okay. Um, another thing with filling out the events and the information for awards, make sure you're using the most updated 
um, and correct MRF and MRP. So some schools use the master record, which has all the information on it. But um, when when you're filling out awards for your events, you have to make sure that each person knows like the tags are all correct and like they are they know which ones go under which category because sometimes it's kind of um, mixed up. I mean, people get mixed up with that, and then it's not like the same. And also, um, you can use the filter, which Judy will explain later after this. And you should include supplementary materials because, like for example, the newsletter um, award, you need to include like four copies of the newsletter. Um, the treasurer and secretary awards, you need to add stuff too. So don't forget about those things. And you should set early deadlines and read all um all the all the words really carefully and leave no blanks. Well if you have any questions, um be sure to ask anyone on the words committee and get your information straight. But the biggest tip of all is to start early as in right now. <laughs> I mean not right now but like right after this if you haven't started yet. And yes, now it'll be Kevin. All right. Thank you, Vivian. At this point, um, your club should be uh, starting to fill out awards, as Vivian mentioned after this webinar. And you or any of your club members or officers may come across parts of some awards where you may be slightly confused or have questions that you need to ask. Well, our, the district awards committee will be hosting several awards informational chats on TinyChat in the near future to help all of you before your awards are due. All the dates uh, will be on February 12th, 13th, 16th, 17th, and 19th at 8 p.m. So please don't hesitate to come to any of these informational chats if you have any questions or concerns about the awards. Uh, there will be a Facebook event page about the info chats that will be sent out after this webinar. Now we will send it to Junie who will be giving you all a tutorial on the new event filter. Okay. Ooh, hold up. Ah. Okay. So now I'm gonna demonstrate how to use the filter. Um, sorry if there is a lag. Um, this will be recorded, and we also do have um, a little how-to document that will release alongside with the um, event filter after after this webinar ends. So for this demo, I'm going to be using Microsoft 2011. Um, I will show you how to copy events from the MRF and the MRP over to the filter. Um, I will be demonstrating how to fill out the, or part of the Maypo Long Overall Service Award. I'll be filling out the Section 3 Community Service portion. And I will also demonstrate how the filter can help out with the board awards. And I will be doing a little bit of Part A for, for the attendance section of the Distinguished Treasure Award. So um, again, um, do note that this filter is optional. You guys don't have to use it. We just made it as a tool to help make the process of filling out awards a lot easier. But if you don't want to use it, or if you have another tool, you can go ahead and use your own tool. Um, again, don't use Microsoft 2008. It just won't work. And it's password blocks, and we won't be giving out the password. There'd be no point. <laughs> and we haven't tested this on Windows 8 and it's the new Office suite, so we can't guarantee that it will work properly. And also, if you guys have, like, say, Neo Office or Open Office, or even, like, just using Google Docs, like, um, I'm not, I can't guarantee that it will work properly. So if you can just use, like, your school computer or someone else's computer, um, that will probably just be the best option. And don't forget the cutoff for Recording events is February 17th, 2013. 
but keep recording the hours for the MRP award, so. Okay. So what you're going to need is you're going to need your current and correct MRF. If you have mistakes on the MRF that you can't change, they don't, don't change them on the MRF, change them on the award or the filter. You're going to need a filled out MRP for the board members. So hopefully the person in charge of your MRP um, has started filling out the MRPs. You're going to need the filter and you're going to need the awards you want to fill out. Okay, so first I'm going to demonstrate copying events from the MRF to the event filter. So you're just going to want to copy everything from the months tab. So anything like say March, March totals, April, April totals, etc. And you're going to want to copy everything from column A through V. So that's everything from the date to the home hosted event tag. And again, if there are any unfixed mistakes on your MRF, fix them on the filter or fix them on the award. And then what you're going to do is you're going to copy, you're going to go to the filter and you're going to right click on an empty date cell, select paste special and do paste values. Oh, I just realized I should show you guys the awards. Okay, so let me see. So here's what the filter looks like. This is for the events, like for like Maple Wall or Kiwanis Family events. And there's also a filter for board members. And for the board members, you're going to copy the information from the MRP onto this filter for the board members. And there's also a little calculation tool thing if you wanted to double check your calculations, like say for DCON you wanted, you wanted to double check your percent attendance. You're going to see you have like 35 members at that time and 10 of them attended. So that means 28.57% of your members have attended. Um, okay, and then here is the Maple Wong Service Award. So at the bottom, there are these tabs for the ISI, the DSI, and the Community Service, and so forth. And that's how it's going to look like for all the awards that are on Excel. Um, on the cover page, it should show what sections there are, so just double check that. And so now I'm going to sh show you guys how to copy events from the MRF onto the filter. So you're going to want to go to your MRF. Here's the MRF. You want to copy all of your events. So right click, copy, then you are going to go to your filter. You're going to want to go to the date cell, right click, paste special, and you're going to want to do paste values. It's going to look a little different on like say a Windows computer, but it should all be the same. And you're going to do paste values. And then if you have more awards, you're just going to keep doing that until you get all of your events. So I'm just going to do a few more so we can get a lot of events. So just keep pasting them under each um, filled row. And you can find the event filter in the jcloud resource center after the, after this webinar, we haven't uploaded it yet. So it's not there if you look at it now.
Okay. I think that's enough events. So, of course, you guys are going to have more, and there should be enough rows for all of your events. If you feel like there isn't enough, just tell us, and we'll we'll fix that. Okay. Okay. So, repeat the copying and pasting for all of your events, and then make sure you paste the values. So just always, always, always paste the values. Don't don't just do Control V or Command V or Apple V. You're gonna like kind of mess up the format of the um of the of the Excel sheet. So you don't want that happening. Okay, so to filter out your events, make sure that your events are in chronological order. If they're not, there are arrows on top of each column. So for to make sure that they're in chronological order, just click on the arrow that's on the date box, and then you can select sort ascending. And then to filter out events that you do or do not want, you can just check or uncheck the X's that you can find by clicking on the arrows for, for, um, for each category. Sorry, my mouth is kind of dry. Okay. So for the Maple Long, I am going to show you guys the community service part. Um, okay, so what the Maple for this section it asks for the date, the project name with the brief description. Don't forget the brief description. The number of club members it involved, total service hours, number of service hours per member, amounts raised if any and then the type of event. So for these last two right here, you're going to have to type that in manually, but it will be easier this time around because you got the filter. Okay. So what you're going to do to, to make sure that it's in chronological order, just click on that arrow and then click ascending. And oh crap. Hold up really quick, you guys. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so you're going to want to sort. And then for this, you just want community service events that are not ISI, DSI, campus service, and continuing service. So first off, you're going to sort out, you're going to click on the CO tag, and you are going to uncheck the blanks. That way it just leaves you with events that are all community service. And so you can't have continuing, you can't have campus service events, so you're going to want to uncheck the X, and that will get rid of all events that are campus service. Then you're going to want to do the continuing service, and you're going to want to do the same thing. And in this case, there are no ISIs or DSIs, so we're good on that. And the reason why you, you want to do that is because you can't have repeated events. So, okay, and an easy way to copy the events is you can either copy this portion, paste it onto the award, and then copy this section right here, or you can hide these columns, right click, hide, and you can just copy it all like that. And you'll know you have columns or rows hidden because the labels will be a bright blue, so that way you know. So you're just going to do the same thing as you did for the MRF. You're going to highlight, right-click copy, go to the service award, right-click, paste special. You're going to always want to do paste special and then do paste special. 
And then if you come up with this, um, just click convert. It just makes sure that the date is correct. So, and basically for the description, you're just going to double click and then start typing. And so if your description is longer than a line, which it should be, the row should expand. And then if that service event was also a fundraising event, you can type in the amount raised. And then for the type of event, you're just going to want to type in the type of service. So it was a community service event. So we'll type in CO. And then that's basically how you do it for the Excel awards. It should be relatively the same. Some of them are slightly different, but it should, it's all relatively the same. So if you do get confused, you should unhide. You will select the columns, right click, unhide, and ta-da! Oh, notice that um, whichever portion you filtered out, there's this little funnel. So you can just click clear filter. Or you can check the X's. And those are all your events. So say you want to do Kiwanis family events. There you go. And you can just do it in whatever order you want. But if you are filtering out several events, just make sure you do it in like the correct order or else it can get kind of messy. But you can always just clear clear out the filter and you'll get up. you'll get more events. Okay, so now for a board member, you're going to want to go to their MRP. Let's see if you can that. You're going to want to go to the MRP. Here's a fake MRP. You're going to want to, and then you're going to want to, oops, you're going to go to board member. So it basically asks the MRP does, except it doesn't ask for the event chair, if they, if they were the event chair. Um, <clears throat> And also the MRP just records the service hours, but some of the awards ask for leadership hours and fellowship hours. So you're also going to have to input that in manually. But if you have the MRP done and if you have your SERFs all organized, then it shouldn't be that much of a difference. You're going to want to just copy it section by section since they don't all fit together. So copy. Right click paste special values. And then for service hours. Section by section. Make sure you're paste you're pasting and the hours or the tags aren't misaligned with the events. Because if that happens, then it just gets a little confusing. Service projects, fundraisers, and socials. Notice that it says um, all club service projects. So you're going to want to hmm. so you're going to want to make sure that all of these events are hosted by your club which they are I believe in this case.
events here aren't listed as club events, so we're just gonna we're just gonna make some fake ones. So X here. X X. Something like that. Okay, so you're gonna want all club events. So you want to uncheck all the blanks because you don't want non-club hosted events. And also it doesn't ask to sort out the the old events. Sorry. Er, oops. Oh, and yeah, I'm using an old MRP, I think. Okay. So basically all we have are events that are community service events and fundraising events. Well, in this case, there aren't, and we also have social events. So it asks to list them out. It asks for the date, the type of event, the name of the event, and the hours. So basically what you can provide right now is the date and the name of the event. So you're going to want to just copy copy it like so. Copy. Right click paste. Meet. Center it. Try to center everything. Okay, and also ask for the type of event and the hours. So you can right click or you can click next to it and then insert columns. So you need the hours. And then right here, you're going to want a column to the left. And you're going to want the type of event. So, and make sure that you provide borders for um, yeah. just make it look neat. You're not being judged on I'm here to read, and it just really helps out the colonies. And that's like that. So um, you can you can try to paste your events onto an existing chart, but in case it does get messy, you can just create a whole new chart yourself. So yeah, like that. So that's basically how you use the filter. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask, but before you do ask the questions, just like play around with it, and we'll also have um, a how-to instruction sheet, so just play around with it, familiarize yourself with it before, like, asking, I guess, and then, yeah, if you have any questions, just ask us. Okay. to the original PowerPoint, and Kevin will now talk about contacts. Well, thank you, Junie, for the tutorial on the Excel filter. Now, if any of you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to send an email uh, to you know, Ashley Valdez, your district awards chair, at her email on the PowerPoint or contacting any of your respective divisional representatives at their email as well. We'll be glad to answer any questions about the awards that you may have in the near future. So now let us move on to some uh, questions and answers that you were uh, asking throughout the webinar.
Hello, everyone. Um, please take this time to answer to ask some questions on the side, and we will answer them as they come. And as for my committee members, um, if you see one that is unanswered, please go ahead and answer as they come. Um, also, we will read them out loud and answer them out loud. That way, you guys can um, hear them as well, so that everyone who is watching this recorded version will be able to hear the question and the answer. So we'll start from the very beginning. Um, someone asked if, um, if for some reason you guys didn't get, I guess this is more of a technical issue, but if you guys didn't get an email saying you logged up and you signed in, um, you are still recorded in our attendance list. So you will um, still be recorded and you will still get the credit for the MRP. Um, Okay, I'll go for the other one. If a club has a single service chair and a service chair would be, sorry, I read that one. If a club has a single service chair and a service chair, would the service chair be able to apply for the A board award? Um, yes, the single, well, the single service has to apply for this well, if they can, if they want to, apply for the Single Service Award. And yes, they can still apply for the Appointment Board Award. Um, the next one. If you have a position as co-service, co-historian, or co-tech chair, or a combination of all three, can you still apply for the Appointed Officer Award? Um, yes, you can apply. Um, even if you have a co, um, both positions or both people who hold that position um, can um, be recognized for their job. So yes, they can both apply. Um, and a clarification we want to make is that um, if they don't, sorry, I want to share what this right. Um, the technology chair um, could apply for the Distinguished A Board Award um, because their position, because there's, um, they're applying for a Distinguished Award as opposed to applying for an Outstanding Award. Um, so technically, I, um, the scrapbook could apply for the A Board Award. Um, this may be confusing to you guys right now. Um, if you guys have any questions regarding who is eligible to apply for an A board and who is not, um, I really recommend you guys email me and I will be able to explain it a lot easier and hopefully I won't confuse you guys at all. Um, so I really recommend you look on that contact page and email me and your representative and we will answer it as clearly as possible and go into it in much more of a detail. Um, I will go up. And answer the other one. Um, for those asking if there is a copy of the presentation, um, there will be one available on the J Cloud. So you will to look at it on the, the J Cloud in the awards, sorry, not the awards, the webinar section. Um, for those wondering where they can find the filter, it will be available also on the J Cloud as soon as this is over. Um, as someone mentioned earlier, uh, might have mentioned, we are using the old MRP, and um, we will um, have to change the order of the tabs, but the way that the filter is utilized is still going to remain the same. We're just going to have to change the order to match the new MRP. So look out for that. It will be up very soon. Um, someone asked if an A board member had to leave for two quarters due to an emergency, and they appointed and a temporary position, um, 
a temporary person to take over the position, will both be able to apply for the Distinguished A Board Award? And um, the answer is yes. Both members are eligible to apply for the award. Um, both should be able to be recognized for their hard work. Um, I do recommend that if this happened to anyone else, um, that you guys mention in the award um, that the situation that occurred and the reason for you having to have um, chosen a temporary board member. So just mention it in the award somewhere so that Kiwanians are not confused as to why they're getting two awards for the same thing but from different people. Um, scrolling down. Um, for those asking very um, detailed questions, um, I will take the time to answer your questions either in an email or um, you guys can talk to me through um, our info chats, which are coming up in February, um, and I'll be able to help you out there. Um, I can't help you out too much right now through the webinar because it is being recorded and I don't want to take up too much time having to go through all those files, but um, I will definitely answer your questions, um, and they are being logged. so. For the most popular questions, I'm going to take them and turn them into a fact page and put it onto our awards section. So if I do not answer your question, do not fret. I will get to it eventually. Um, but at the moment, I'm just answering the more generalized questions. But I'm just waiting for more. <laughs> so if you guys have any, please feel free to ask away. My committee and I are here. Um, someone asked, for club attendance, when applying for distinguished MBE, does it count against you if you were not able to make it because of work obligations? Um, no, it doesn't count against you too drastically. Um, if at anywhere in the award it offers you the opportunity to explain, as this goes for any other situation for any other award, I really recommend you guys take the time to explain why. Um, if at any point it doesn't, um, have the person who is writing either your recommendation letter um, or the person who, um, or if there's any other section to include it, um, mention that you were very busy because of work and as a student you also have um, other things to take care of as well. So you, some of you guys may not have had work, but you may be um, busy going um, to different other school conventions or anything like that. Um, so just make sure to state it anywhere. You can always attach a page to the very end of your award, kind of like a, just like a supplementary material, but not really. Um, so you'll just attach it to the very end explaining why, if you want to give the Kwanians a little bit more of an explanation as to why you couldn't attend all meetings. Um, there's nothing stopping you from doing that, so you guys can do that if you want. Ask away, guys. Ask away. Um, for all the eboard award questions. Um, in order to avoid confusion, I'm going to not answer the question at this moment. Um, I feel that it might be necessary for me to send out a mass email to all presidents and everyone on board. So I'm actually going to take the time to write out an e-board, uh, sorry, e -board, to write out an email and to send it out to everyone necessary. Um, so if you guys still have questions about that, just look forward to an email and I will get to that as soon as this webinar is over for you guys just to help you guys understand a little bit better and to not take up so much time. <laughs> um, someone asked for the Maple Wong Award, 
AV Service Project counts for multiple TAPs, the ISI, the DSI, um, and et cetera. Which tab would it go under? Um, since we don't want you to repeat events, um, I recommend that you choose the one that you need the most help in. So, for instance, if you have like 20 events under the DSI, but you only have about 10 for the ISI, and the, and the event falls under both categories, I recommend you move it to the ISI, <laughs> because it does help you out more in the other section. Um, but it's, it's up to you where you decide to put it. That is just a recommendation on my part. Um, you can also choose to just include it in the section that you feel it falls more under. So if you remember what the event is about, um, then you can put it wherever you feel. As long as you do not repeat events, you will be good. Yay, I'm glad you liked this webinar. Does anyone have any more questions? Um, if I didn't answer your question, it's probably because it was a little too complicated for me at the moment, because it would require me opening some documents. Um, so I'm holding off on them. Don't think I have ignored them, because I haven't. I just have them on the side, um, and I will answer them for you guys all in an email or in a fact page that I will release later. But does anyone have any more generalized questions or anything else to say? Yes, we can put up my email and all the contact page. Um, Junie, if you can scroll back in the PowerPoint and just show all the contact information. If at any point you guys feel like I didn't answer um, a question even though, um, or, am I or if I'm taking too long, um, feel free to just email me yourselves. Or if you have any questions with the filter, um, this new tool is meant for you guys, and um, it is meant for, to be there for you guys to utilize. Um, so don't be afraid to ask any questions. Do not hesitate. Um, we will also do our best to show you another um, version to have for you guys to learn how to utilize the filter if you guys couldn't see very clearly through the video. Um, we will be releasing a manual tutorial um, on a document. So you guys will be able to look at it through there. So we'll be, and we will be available to help you guys out anytime you need it. But I believe the questions are ending. I'm doing a last call for questions. And if no one has anything, then I will go ahead and end it for now. But I'm waiting for questions. Okay, it looks like we don't have many more, or any more. Um, again, if I didn't answer your questions, do not worry. I'll answer them. Um, oh, I got one. Uh, should a SERF be filled out for this event? Yes! Please um, remember to either SERF it or whatever other form you guys utilize for your own club and um, report it to your, to your secretary. Um, this event does count towards your MRP. And it also gives you admin hours. So remember to always surf events. Um, but I believe that was our last question. So I will now go ahead and end this webinar. And I thank you guys all for attending. I wish you all a good night. And I hope it was very informative. And I hope you guys got what you guys were looking for. Um, please look forward to an email about the Aboard Award and about many other little things that we might have missed. And feel free to contact me or any one of your respective um, contacts. And have a good night. Thank you.